Hello everyone, welcome again to Good News Internet Broadcasting. My name is Bobby Wibowo, one of the English ministry pastors at Sarang Nanum Community Church in Ambler, Pennsylvania. I'm so glad to welcome you to this evening's program. And before we start, let us pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We praise you, Lord, for all the things that you have done in our lives. And we also praise you, Father, for the things that you are currently doing, as well as the things that you will be doing, God, because you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Thank you, God, for all the blessings that you've given to our lives, in our lives as well, Lord, and we are so grateful. Teach us, Lord, to number our days that we may have a heart of wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this evening I'd like to open us with a prayer, not only just a prayer, but um, I'd like to read for you from Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 to 11. Let us read it together. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, working at his wheel. And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter has done? Declares the Lord, Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. If at any time I declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. And if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I intended to do to it. And if at any time I declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it, and if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then... I will relent of the good that I had intended to do to it. Now, therefore, say to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am shaping disaster against you and devising a plan against you. Return everyone from its evil way and amend your ways and your deeds. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, how many of you have ever gone to a potter's shop? A potter is usually a person who would work on a clay or with a clay to make it into a vessel, perhaps into a cup, perhaps into a bowl made out of clay. I have once seen a man who was a potter and at his pottery, he was working and when he was working and working, he thought in his head of something that he wanted to make. And when he was making it, and if he saw that he would like to make changes to the, the vessel, he would make the changes. And in the end, he would also decorate it, paint it with a certain color, make it a certain, look a certain way to make it nicer. But I always thought to myself, if I was the clay, how would I feel? with the potter mixing things around, changing things, and putting paints all over me, I would probably say, hey, stop, it hurts. Or, hey, what are you doing putting all these paints on me? I'm good as I am. But do you know, the Lord is like the potter, shaping our lives, moving us around, changing us, making us into a better person changing us, cleaning the edges out, smoothing out the edges so that we can be a better person, so that we can be the person that the Lord wants us to be. Just like that vessel, 
which perhaps at a certain time the potter will draw into it, put a certain paint. We might say, why did this incident happen to me? It's, it has messed up my life. Why did this thing happen in my life? Or why did, not, well, why did that not happen? My brothers, my sisters, I understand. It's okay for us to be, for a moment, misunderstanding, happening. It's okay for us to feel a certain way. It's okay for us to, for a moment, feel sad, feel like we don't understand. However, before we let it drag on for so long, all those feelings, why not stop for a second and say, I know the Lord is doing something right now. And in the end, all of this will bring something good. Our part is to stay joyful, to be thankful. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that a cheerful heart does good like a medicine. But the crushed spirit dries up the bones. Would you rather live with a dried up bone or would you rather live cheerfully? I would rather live cheerfully, though it's not easy. First four says in this chapter, and the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do. When a clay is spoiled, it represents our lives. Perhaps in the past, something we did was a mistake. We did something we shouldn't have done. Or we look back, we thought, my goodness, I shouldn't have made that business decision. Or I should not have um, stayed with that crowd of friends. I felt that my life would have been better had I not taken that route. Or you might say, had I done this, had I, had I gone to college, my life would be better. Or had I invested in this stock, I would have more money right now. Or had I not, had I not abused my body with this and that substance, I would still be healthy right now. But my brother and my sister, did you see the next part of the first says, and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do. When God reworked our life, making it into another vessel, it means that God can make your life and my life to a certain way to make it better than it was before. All the mistakes, God can make it all work together with all the right decisions to eventually, finally bring something good. The book of Jeremiah reminds us when the Lord says as well that, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for good and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. We have a future, we have a hope, my brothers and my sisters. We have this life in front of us where the Lord just wants us to take it one day at a time, not even a week at a time. Yes, it's okay to plan ahead, we must plan ahead, we must do our best, put our savings together, investments, work, spend and give, However, never forget that the Lord wants us to make the most of every day. Let us not make the mistake of living in the future for so long that you miss out on the present. My brothers and my sisters, when a potter reworked a clay into another vessel, do you know that sometimes the second vessel can be much bigger than the first one? The second vessel could be much nicer than the first one. A bigger vessel could contain more water. More water can be given to more people. So it is with our lives. Our lives can be more impactful, meaningful, when the Lord had reworked it. Though it's not easy, none of us are perfect, but one thing is certain, we can do our best. We can stay grateful and thankful we can live our life trusting the Lord fully. The Lord reminds us here that 
if he had planned to do something evil to a kingdom, a country, but then the people then repent, the Lord will not do, will not carry out the bad things that he was about to do. But if he was about to do something good to a country or nation or a kingdom, but then that place, the people decided to forsake the Lord's ways, then the Lord would hold back from doing the good that he was about to do. However, this chapter ends this way, my brothers and my sisters. In verse 11, well, it had, this chapter has more verses, but at least this portion of the chapter that we're going to be learning today. It says, Now therefore, say to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am shaping disaster against you and devising a plan against you. Return everyone from his evil way and amend your ways and your deeds. Isn't it amazing, my brothers and my sisters, when a person has done so many bad things, but they come to the Lord, ask for forgiveness, and ask for a sincere change of heart, the Lord forgives. This is what happens here. When a person returns from their evil way and amend their ways and their deeds, the Lord gives them a second chance. Just like that clay that was being worked on by the potter, so it will be with our lives if we would come to the Lord and amend our ways. Mend our ways and our deeds. Today, how many of us can look back and say, I wish I did not do that? Or how many of you could say, I wish I had done that? Whatever that thing might be, maybe the Lord speaking to your hearts right now. My brothers and my sisters, let go of the past. Embrace the future. Embrace the future knowing that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to forgive your sins and my sins. He came so that we may have life and have it abundantly. You might say, if I don't see proof of it, if I don't see proof of the Lord being at work, I don't believe it. Well, my, sis my brothers, my sisters, Jesus said to his disciple Thomas, Thomas, you believe because you have seen, but blessed are those who believe though they do not see. Today, my brothers, my sisters, maybe you have not seen the healing that you are asking the Lord for, but believe that the Lord has your best interest at heart. My brothers and my sisters, perhaps right now, your answers, the answers to your prayers have not arrived yet. But believe and trust that the Lord who has taken you this far will keep taking you further and further in life to be able to achieve greater and greater things for His glory. God is not done in doing work in your life. If you are still alive, that means God still wants you to do something. God still has a plan for your life. God has a goal for you to reach. And our part is to stay faithful. Psalm 37 reminds us, especially in verses 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and so forth. That though the righteous stumble, they will not fall all the way down because the Lord upholds His hands. Also reminds us that when it says there, I have been young and now I'm old, but I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor His children begging for bread. They are ever lending generously and his children becomes a blessing. How many of us want the next generation, our descendants, to be a blessing? I sure do want that. My brothers, my sisters, you have a choice today to live righteously. Who is the righteous person? It is the person who have received Jesus Christ as their personal savior. It is a person who have confessed with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their hearts that God raised him from the dead. That is the person that will be saved. My brothers, my sisters, Bible says that 
all have fa fallen short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect, but we have a perfect God. We have a perfect high priest who died for our sins. We have a God who loves us so much that He came to make sure that you and I can have a second chance. Today, will you take that second chance? If you've been a Christian and you've been going to church but you've been discouraged lately, pick yourself back up again. Reach out to God. But if you are a person who have never received the Lord Jesus into your heart as your personal Savior, I would invite you today, as you're listening to the sound of my voice, to receive Jesus Christ. If you don't know where you will spend eternity, where you will go if you die, if you pass away, come, receive the Lord Jesus into your heart. Be like the clay who is being reworked into another vessel. Because, like the clay in the hand of the potter, so is our lives in God's hands. Will you pray this prayer with me if you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of my sin. Be my Lord and Savior. Amen. And right now, I would like to pray for the rest of us for all of us who are listening to this program tonight. If you need healing, if you need strength, if you need peace in your heart, why don't you lift up your hand as we pray together. Father God, I pray to, for everyone who is listening right now, God, if there's anyone who is sick, Father, I pray for healing, Father. Anyone who is discouraged, Lord, strengthen them, Father. If there's anyone here, Father, who is listening, and they are, Father, confused. Guide them, Father. Lord, if there's anyone here, Lord God, who are feeling that, or who have feeling in their hearts and who, is, in who, who in their body, Lord, they're feeling just they can't take it anymore. Father, I pray, strengthen them, lift them up, Father. Lord Jesus, right now I pray that the word that have been preached, Father, that your, your servant has preached, Lord, that it will be a, something, Lord, of a seed that will grow in the hearts of your sons and daughters who are listening. Thank you, God. We know you are in control. Speak to us, God. We know, Lord, as we say amen, your words will continue to minister in each and every one of our hearts. We'll continue to do the work in each and every one of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, God's people say, Amen. God bless you all, my brothers and my sisters. Until we meet again next time, bye-bye.